एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम In previous videos, we have talked about atomic structure. We have talked about molecular structures in light of modern quantum theory as well as Schrodinger equation. Here, we are going to look at a little more deeper into interactions within the electrons of d orbitals. Have you ever wondered that why these beautiful looking gemstones, which are used for making jewelry and lot of other things, they appear so? why they are colored why they give you bright colors and why not other metals do that so these wonderful properties of certain metals and all those elements which have d electrons or electrons in the d orbital they encounter or experience a phenomena which is called as crystal field splitting Welcome to Ashan Academy my name is Aditya and you're watching engineering chemistry videos if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from Ashan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below so in this video which will be of two parts we'll be talking about this particular concept called crystal field splitting which is associated with change in energy levels of the electrons of d subshell or d orbitals and that is responsible for lot of changes or lot of dramatic uh, phenomenal properties of d block elements such as changes in their magnetic properties some might look like diamagnetic but they behave as paramagnetic as well as uh, other properties such as color texture and many more physical appearances so all these explanations can be done with the help of something called as crystal field splitting and we will be talking about this in the present video so let us start understanding that what uh, crystal field splitting is in order to understand that we first have to go back and look at the degeneracy of d orbitals if you have not seen the previous video already you can check the video on atomic orbitals and you can see how atomic orbitals were deduced from schrodinger's equation and as you increase from s to p to d you will gradually see increase in the number of degeneracy d orbitals are primarily of five types so these five types of d orbitals they are due to the differences in the arrangement across axis you have dxy then dyz and dzx remember that the x's are different here it is x and y here it is y and z here it is z and x so these are three different uh, d orbitals and then there are two more you have dx square minus y square and you have another one that has slightly different shape which is called as dz square so these five degenerate d orbitals are likely to have same energy that means if an atom is having electron in d orbitals which will be spinning in the third orbit so they will be in m orbit or third orbit all the electrons will be present in d subshells or d orbitals so there can be a maximum of 10 electrons that can be present in this d orbital but as you can see the degeneracy does not mean that the energy is different so just like px py and pz had identical energies these four are these five are also likely to have same energies but now what is crystal field splitting crystal field splitting is basically the splitting of energy levels of these five orbitals so two out of these fives vary in the energy i mean their energy changes their energy level changes under the influence of certain external agents now what are these external agents 
you might have heard about metal crystals. Most of the D block elements, they are capable of interacting with a lot of other things which are called ligands. So as soon as a ligand come close to a metal ion, what happens? They tend to interact with these electrons of D orbitals. And now you can imagine that these are degenerate orbitals, but they are present all together. So when a ligand will approach a metal ion, which will have electrons in the D orbital, then what would happen? The likelihood of one of the type of these D orbitals is likely to come much closer to the ligand compared to other degenerate orbitals. Let me make myself more clear. When these orbitals are in one place and a ligand is approaching, then a part of ligand or electrons of ligand do not equally interact with all this degenerate, all these degenerate orbitals, but have a preference or have a proximity towards few of them. So since they do not interact equally with all these orbitals, there is a likelihood of change in energy of those which are much closer to the ligand as compared to few other ones. So this is basically the phenomena of crystal field splitting which is observed in most of the D block elements or especially metal ion complexes with the ligands. In more subjective terms, if you want to look at specific points, they have been provided here. It describes, the crystal field theory describes the breaking of orbital degeneracy which was already degenerate, all the orbitals were identical, that degeneracy is broken down and now 5D orbitals do not remain identical. And that happens mostly in case of complex transition complexes. That means D block elements, which might include iron or copper or many other metals, which you can see in periodic table. Then CFT uh, qualitatively described the strength of the metal ligand bonds. It is based on the strength of metal ligand bonds, the energy of the system is altered. So it's quite clear we have already understood that the energy levels of the D block have already been altered, which happens under the influence of ligand interacting with metal. This will lead to a change in magnetic properties as well as color. If you remember, I told you in the beginning, the beautiful color of gemstones that actually comes from the crystal field splitting when certain impurities they impermeate into those stones which are already having a very defined ligand structure, ligand or lattice structure. When such impurities interact there with the ions present in the crystal, they cause crystal field splitting and they change the color. So color change as well as magnetic properties change can be experienced because of the crystal field splitting. And uh, this was of course developed by Hans Bethe and John has Brock, who was who were pioneers for development of this crystal field splitting theory, which is still being used in the chemistry for a lot of reasons. So now looking for again uh, that uh, particular perspective of how splitting takes place, this might help you a little bit to understand it more clearly. Uh, we can imagine a metal ion as a simple sphere with a central nucleus which is positively charged and electron cloud distributed all around the metal ion in a uniform manner. So unless a ligand is coming close to a metal ion, we can imagine that d orbitals are distributing electrons all over the atom equally in three dimensional space. So charge is distributed in a spherical manner. You can imagine that d orbitals will be present all over here and they will be degenerate, they will all have equal energies. But what eventually happens, if you look at a specific positions of, of this, uh, I mean a ligand, which is coming close to a metal ion. So if this is a metal ion and there are multiple ligands, oppositely charged ligands, like negatively charged ligands, which are approaching a metal ion. So depending on which metal ion interacts much closer with the D subshell, if you can closely look at the structures of D subshells. So one of the D orbital will be interacting more with one of the ligand and another D orbital will be interacting with another ligand. So there will be a generation of asymmetry because of this. And now after the ligand approaches a metal ion, the charge distribution which was otherwise spherical will not remain spherical. 
So that leads to splitting. And what we can see here in terms of energy levels, you can see here that the energy levels of all five degenerate orbitals, you can see here in the form of five different lines, so you can say that these five lines are representing dx, y, y, z, z, x, x square minus y square and z square. They all had identical energies unless this metal ion started to interact with the ligand. So the moment when it interacted with the ligand, I mean, once it get, got activated, the energy slightly got elevated, but the interaction of ligands then splitted the energies of these five degenerate d orbitals into two parts. You can see here that three of them dxy, dyz and dzx they now have relatively lower energy than the excited state degenerate d orbitals and two of them x square minus y square and z square they have higher energy. So there is now a gap which is created between uh, two and three d subshells or d orbitals. So two of five d orbitals have got higher energy. They are generally termed as eg. So there is a collective term which is given to these two orbitals eg set of orbitals and this one is called as t2g. So from now on we can call them as t2g uh, set of orbitals and we can call them as eg set of orbitals. So these are two orbitals have now difference in energy and that energy gap has been represented by delta naught. So this delta naught or the amount of energy gap which is created, it depends on a lot of factors. It is not always constant, but it is basically dependent on what kind of ligands are coming close to this metal ion. More powerful a ligand is, more powerful a splitting it can do. So on that basis, we can also define ligands as weak ligands or strong ligands. I mean, when we are looking at the crystal structures of metals, especially metal complexes, we can compare different type of metal complexes. Some of them can have a higher gap. Some of them can have a lower gap. And on that criteria, we can call those as weak field ligands and strong field ligands. So ligands that can cause a transition metal to have a small crystal field splitting. I mean, when the splitting is not very powerful, that is called as, uh, those lig ligands are called as weak field ligands. And those ligands which can cause a strong field splitting, they are called as strong field ligands. So more the amount of charge, larger the coordination number, all these things will make a, a particular ligand stronger and a smaller charge or a smaller coordination number that will make a ligand weaker. You can also see here some examples in the order of their uh, strengths. So ligands such as CO, CN, NO2, ammonia, SCN, all these are considered to be strong field ligands. That means they are capable of causing much more difference in the EG and T2G orbitals. Whereas water, OH, oxalate, these are kind of intermediate field ligands. On the other hand, fluoride, acetate, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they are much weaker ligands. And you will also realize that since the energy gap is more, when the energy gap is more, and when you are filling electrons, the likelihood of filling the electrons will be more in the lower energy states, that is T2G. But when the gap is less, then there is a possibility that first electrons will be filled unpaired manner in all the orbitals and then the pairing would start. So this state is called as high spin. It will be obtained when the ligand is a comparatively weak field ligand, the gap is less. And when gap is more, usually you will have a low spin state. So low spin and high spin, these are the things which are responsible for changes that occur in the metal ion complexes, especially their color and appearance or other physical properties. So I hope by now you have understood that what crystal field splitting is and once you have understood the crystal field splitting it will be imperative to look at further details of crystal field splitting that how, how does it change the properties and is there any impact on the coordination number I mean how many ligands which are binding to a metal ion suppose there are four ligands binding or eight ligands binding will that also influence the crystal field splitting we will talk about that in the coming video that will be the second part of this.
If you want to learn more about this topic, you can refer this book from S. Chan Publishing. You can find link for ebook in the description box below. You can like, share and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates. prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.